All right, friends, I'm trying something different today. I am getting my summer studio set up. Uh, my family has a little tiny house. <laughs> it's like 800 square feet um, just outside of New York. And we spend the summer here and I am bringing my, all of my stuff to set up the studio. And I thought you might want to come along with me and I'll, I'll show you how I set up my studio and I'll show you some of the equipment I use along the way. So if we haven't met before, I'm Brenda Earl Stokes. I'm the owner and creator of Piano and Voice with Brenda. I make creative and practical resources for singers, pianists, and music educators. Now, in addition to my YouTube channel, which you can see here and of course subscribe to, I also teach private lessons in voice and piano, both in person in my home in New York City and also internationally all around the globe on Zoom. I also have an online course membership and in my studio, I film all of that material there. Plus I give workshops for groups of people at different institutions. So this setup that you're gonna see today is super versatile. Um, I don't have to do anything. I set it, I forget it, we're good. So let me take you through this process as I set it up. So this is all the equipment that I need. Um, got a couple of stands there, excuse my messy kitchen. Um, this is all my computer equipment. I have a ring light, um, a whole bunch of books. There are two other big things of books and accessories, um, stands, and then my giant keyboard. And it's all gonna go inside my studio. Right now, it is blissfully empty. And that is an old desk I've had for like 20 years. <laughs> and uh, the air conditioner is here, my husband just built out this beautiful um, closet to hide all of our ugly stuff, like the old bookshelf full of laundry detergent and the actual washer dryer. <laughs> it's a multi-purpose room. And um, now I'm gonna get it set up. So I use a Casio Privia. Um, these things are just the best. This is a PX3 limited edition. I mean, it's just old. <laughs> I've had it probably oh gosh, seven or eight years now. And it's great, it's mini compatible, um, so I can run everything in. It has, you know, a decent selection of sounds. You know, there's maybe about 20 in each of these, but it's more than enough if I'm doing like a wedding gig or um, playing a rock band or something. Um, then some other stuff I don't ever use, but I spent $600 on this many years ago. And I tell you, this thing is the best, I love it. So as you can see, next up, I brought my, um, we've been together for several years now and I love it. It's uh, really a great purchase that I bought. I hadn't ever bought one with a screen this size, but I'm really glad I did, especially now that I'm getting older. Now I have a basket full of all the accoutrement I need to <laughs> actually hook everything up. So let me show you what this looks like now. So I'm sure this is what the professionals use, a laundry basket full of cables and other accoutrement. And this is the most organized way I could think about doing this. So I'm gonna unwrap all this stuff and start to set it up. You can see I have a set of, this is just a set of Bose speakers um, that are great because I use these as my monitors when I'm teaching, um, which is great, or when I'm filming. Um, I also have a focus right. This is an audio interface that has four channels in it. So as you can see here, I use um, one is for voice, one is for piano high, one is for piano low. So this is set up for if I'm um, singing and playing piano and doing a recording that way. Otherwise, what I do when I'm um, teaching or doing something um, using my electric keyboard, my Casio, then I put the voice in here and then I just have a single line that goes in there from the mini ca uh, keyboard. So I'm gonna see what I can do about this mess and get it all set up. You can never have enough power strips. All right, let's talk keyboard pedals. So let's talk about pedals for um, keyboards. Uh, most keyboards come with what they call a foot switch. They can't even call it a pedal because it doesn't look like a pedal. It's like a little, <laughs> little square plastic thing that you have to play. And anybody who's playing series piano, like that's just no way now. So uh, I always have to buy one of these. And I, I think this is my third one that I've owned for different. This is an M gear um, keyboard uh, pedal. And you can use it for a sustain or for, um, a soft pedal. You could probably plug two in if you wanted to. I just use it for sustain for holding notes longer. 
And then here's something you may not know, is that pedals are polarized. And so you may have had this before if you, you play electric keyboards where you will put the foot pedal down and then it will release the note and then when you haven't pushed it down, then the notes are sustaining. So a lot of people don't know that they're polarized. So this one in particular, let's see if you can see that, has a switch on it. Can you see that? And so what I can do is switch it to one and see if it works for my keyboard or the other. Um, I don't quite know why that is. I'm sure if you know, like leave it in the comments below why that's a thing. <laughs> you definitely want to make sure that you get a polarized one or one that's made specifically for your keyboard. So what I love about this is that I have three different keyboards that I use. I have an old one that usually lives here so I can practice when we're here for the weekend. Um, I also have this one that I use for most of my gigs and then I have a smaller one, much smaller Casio. Um, I think it's 66 keys or something that I use for kind of quick gigs or gigs um, where I don't want to have to carry a ton of stuff and so I can use the same pedal for all of them and not have to worry about whether it's going to be the right fit or not so fun fact every music studio needs a metronome a good old-fashioned digital metronome the best I even remember to charge them <laughs> It's empty. All right, so let me explain what this is, okay? In order to hook up my MIDI keyboard into my computer uh, so that I can use Finale, which is music notation, or if I wanna do, um, put some, you do some recording right on the computer, this is what I need to use, okay? Um, it is a MIDI drive on the end of it and then it goes to a USB and it goes through this little magical box, which again, I don't understand whatever it is, but I need this in order for my keyboard to go through my computer. Um, I understand now that um, most of the keyboards you can just plug directly in and it's not, you don't need this interface, but I'm too cheap to replace this <laughs> still working keyboard from seven years ago. So um, I still use the little dongle. Okay, so I skipped through some of the boring stuff because like you don't need to watch me or listen to me um, plugging things in and saying bad words. Because <laughs> what would have been super smart is if I had um, taken a picture of all the cords <laughs> where they plugged in. So let me show you here. So this is the progress I've made so far. Um, I have now hooked up the um, digital audio uh, interface Scarlett uh, thing. Um, is now plugged in. Um, the speakers are plugged in and they are all connected. I also have made this um, MIDI um, connection into the back of the keyboard and you can follow the little red line all goes all the way plugged into the back of the computer. So right now what's plugged in there is this is the um, digital audio uh, little red box thingy and then this is the um, audio or the MIDI cable for my um, keyboard. One other thing that I need to do is actually plug the keyboard into the digital audio workstation. And so right now the keyboard is plugged into the computer, but it's not plugged into the workstation. And I'll explain what the workstation is for in a little bit. Actually, I can explain it to you while I show you myself plugging it in. Um, I need to have a line out because the sound is coming out of the keyboard and it is going to go into the digital audio workstation. So I'll just plug that in and where I tend to put it is where it says piano high because when I'm um, recording my uh, piano back in the city, I have uh, one microphone on one side of the piano and one on the other to pick it up. So this is how I can keep track. And I just plug it in here. This is great because you can plug um, a regular microphone into there and you can also plug these quarter inch ones, okay? So this digital audio workstation puts, everything goes into there and goes into the computer. So this is like a little, um, little mixing station. So when I'm here, if I want, you know, and again, I use this for absolutely everything. I use this for um, when I'm teaching and I teach um, using ManyCam, an app. Um, I'll, I can do a video on that if you're interested. Leave me a comment below because that's how I put all things together. But I will use ManyCam. 
I plug this through ManyCam and then use ManyCam um, as an interface so that I have a nice um, fancy screen on Zoom. Um, so this is for my Zoom lessons. I also use that for when I'm making some of my YouTube tutorials and if I'm doing recordings and things, everything comes through here. Um, and then the audio goes directly into the computer. So this silver wire here I showed you a minute ago is the actual um, digital audio workstation being plugged into the computer. So now those are there. So the piano is all set up, <laughs> yay. Um, I should turn it on and make sure it's working so I don't have to say, oh, it's working. Yay, hooray, yay, success. I used to be really bad at this stuff and so it's like extra fun for me when it works. So now all I have left to do is I have to set up the microphone to record my vocals, etc. And then I will show you how I set up the overhead camera. So let's do that. Okay, so I will show you the microphone that I use. I use the one that all the podcasters use. It's the Shure SM7B. Um, you've probably seen it. All the podcasters on earth use it. It's a pretty good microphone. I guess this is the one that Michael Jackson used too. I mean, that's not why I bought it. <laughs> I bought it because I asked on Facebook what's a good microphone and this is what everyone said. It's got the screen on it so you can, you know, sort of sing and talk into it without worrying about, you know, popping your peas too much. Um, and it generally gets a pretty good sound. So I like it. It has this heavy duty thing um, on it to connect. And so what I did is I bought a really heavy duty stand to go with it and I'll show it to you here. So I bought one of these heavy duty microphone stands. Um, this thing weighs a ton and the reason is because this microphone also weighs a ton and so when I was trying it on lighter microphone stands which I tend to prefer tripod ones for when I'm gigging because it's easier to carry like this is such a drag to have to carry you know at a wedding gig or something like that to like carry from where you're doing the ceremony and then take it up the stairs to the to actual party um, so I got this heavy-duty one and then this just screws right into it <laughs> standard microphone cable to connect it and then I'm going to show you a little tip about using these Shure SM7B microphones. So here's my tip. Those, these microphones, the Shure SM7B is pretty good but my only problem with it is that it, it doesn't give you a lot of sound. It's very quiet. And I was having a difficult time with that when I first started working with it because what would happen is I would record and the vocals would be really low in the mix and I'd try to take them up and they would distort. So a good friend of mine, Chris Allen, who is an amazing um, recording engineer here in New York City who did my last two records ago, he, put, he engineered it and is amazing, suggested that I get one of these. And this is a cloud lifter mic activator and what it does is it makes this microphone, it gives it a good boost so that I have a little bit more sound sound to work with. And I tell you again, this was like about 130 bucks or something, totally worth its weight in gold. Um, the Shure SM7B, I can't remember exactly how much it costs, but I'll leave an estimate here. So I have to remember which side to plug it in. Oh good, they do it the male female way. So I plug it in one side, and then I got a little short cable, and this short cable comes out the other end. And then I plug this directly into my digital audio workstation. All right, so now you can see um, the piano is already plugged in. Um, the voice is now plugged in. So there's the little short microphone cable and then it goes into the cloud lifter and then it goes dee -dee 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 attached to the microphone. And so I'm just gonna configure this a little bit and then next up is the overhead camera. All right, so far so good, you can see. There's actual sound coming out. I had to troubleshoot it for a second because of course, like something always goes wrong. The last thing I need to do is hook up one of the two low G HD 1080, whatever that means. Um, I have to hook this up as an over, overhead camera. And um, this is just gonna be to go over my hands, 
so that my students can see all of that. And so you, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and start watching all my awesome videos, that you can um, see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna screw this on. I had to buy a little attachment thing um, and screw it on. So I'm just gonna take a minute and do that. And then what I like to do is have it from that side of the piano and I have it up quite high. So again, this took a lot of trial and error to figure it out, which is kind of why I wanted to make this video for anybody else who's trying to figure this out already. Um, but this has quite a long, it can go up quite high. Um, and then I have some flexibility here um, for how long I want this to be so that I can get it centered really, really well. And I can move it up and down as I need to. Um, so let me see if I can get it to fit over there. My only real beef with this is that the cable is so short. I mean, I'm sure they didn't make it for people who were gonna like plug it in from the top of the keyboard, but I do need to get an uh, extension cord for this, but I'll just plug it right into the back. So I just plugged it right into the back of the computer and it should be ready to go now. So I wanted to just draw your attention to this little piece too, because what this is, is it's a holder for um, my cell phone. So if I'm just doing a little quick reel or something like that, I just need a quick overhead, usually for social media stuff or to send to a student if they have a question, um, then I will just throw my phone up here and you can see it has a, it has an attachment here so that I can put this right onto the boom stand. So I always um, keep that up there just in case because you never know. Well, we did it. It's all set up. Let me show you what it looks like. I'm actually kind of impressed that this didn't take too long. I appreciate you joining me on this. Let me show you what it looks like. All right, so here's the overview. My Casio keyboard is there. Um, husband's guitar amp, Ooh, put that away somewhere. Um, and you can see up here, I have the um, webcam that lives here all the time, which I can adjust um, to you know look over the keyboard. Sometimes I will write notes on a, a piece of paper and show on the camera there. It's a good thing to do. And then I have this one here that is for my iPhone for if I want to shoot a quick Instagram reel or something for my students. Um, this is what the desk area looks like now. So my microphone is here, all ready to go, and I usually keep it on the left-hand side. Um, if I'm doing shooting one of my courses, what I tend to do is take my keyboard and put it directly in front. So I would put the keyboard here so I can be head-on. So I'm giving a talk to my versatile musician members tonight. We're doing a monthly Zoom call. So, you know, later on I will move this over there so that I can be head on to the camera. But when I'm teaching, I tend to just keep it here because it's out of the way. And then you can see that my desk is configured. I have these two Bose computer speakers on each side. That was what took me a minute to remember where it goes. Um, and then there's my uh, digital audio uh, interface. Um, there's the cloud lifter and then of course the blessed metronome and you can see there's still kind of a bird's nest of cables and things I wanted to make sure everything was working properly before I like neatly stowed it in the back in case I have to say the F word a few times and um, you know <laughs> figure out why this isn't working but I'm going to test this with my um, entire system with the zoom call um, and uh, also with the uh, mini cam. And again, if you're interested in a mini cam tutorial, let me know because I'd be happy to do that. So I hope this was an interesting and fun video for you. I haven't ever done one of these before, so I thought it might be interesting to do since I'm here <laughs> setting it all up anyways. Um, I am going to leave a list of all of the different um, devices and doodads and doohickeys that I used in this video in case you want to take a closer look. Um, if you have any questions about anything, I'll answer them if I can, but I, you know, I can uh, just tell you what I use. That's the basic, the basic gist of what I can do. I urge you to take a few minutes, look around my channel. I have a, just a ton of great tutorials, piano tutorials, musicianship, all kinds of stuff like that. And of course you can find me at my website, Piano and Voice. With, I wanna thank you for joining me on this uh, fun little set up the studio with me for summer. Um, if you enjoyed it, please leave me a thumbs up. I'd be happy to do more of these, um, you know, showing you how to set things up or um, different setups that I use for teaching and for recording, etc. 
Um, I am a professional musician and teacher, but I'm not the most professional <laughs> studio person, but I can certainly um, give you the, you know, an easy tour of the, the tools that I use and, and what works for me. I'm not a super technological person, um, but I have somehow managed to do it. So I promise you, if I can get this set up, you absolutely can as well. I want to take you a moment and just invite you to take a look around my channel. I generally do a ton of tutorials on piano skills, um, specifically piano skills for singers, music tutorials, um, playing different pop songs and jazz songs, uh, musicianship conduct, a, a ton of really great resources. So take a moment and uh, subscribe to my channel and have a look around. There's like a lot of really great free resources here. If you want to know more about the work that I do or if you're interested in um, joining my membership, The Versatile Musician, you can check out my website, pianoinvoicewithbrenda.com. Um, on there you'll find, again, tons more really great resources and um, it'd be great to have you along in the fam. Um, anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Uh, feel free to leave any questions you have in the comments below. Have a good day, everybody.